imitated by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 177. Be on the lookout for three men. Number one, Glenn Harmon, alias Dick Hunt, age 30. Number two, Byron, alias Jerry Wolf, age 19. Number three, name unknown, age 35 years, driving a Ford V8 sedan. These men are warned by, by a Missouri sheriff for murder. That's all. Golden Quest. <laughs> Yeah, it's right, Jerry. You don't want to 
waiting for anything more, Proprietor Dugan leaves his precarious spot, hurries to his own cabin, gives rapid instructions to his helper. Uh, you take this note, see, and get it over to Hatcher, the deputy sheriff. You, you, you know him, don't you? Yeah. All, all right. Tell him that I don't know what these guys are trying to pull, but to get over here as fast as he can, and I'll wait here. Oh, okay, Mr. Dugan. Yes. I'll get him. Yes, yes, and don't lose any time doing it. <laughs> Notified by the boy, Deputy Sheriff Hatcher drives to the little children's camp at top speed. But as he arrives, two cars are pulling away, three men in each. A quick glance into the first one, and Hatcher realizes that Duke and Spears are well founded. Let's drive that car. Steve, it's Steve. Anyone, who else was in it? Well, I couldn't tell, Sheriff. Too dark. All right, you hop back to the phone and tell Sheriff Rogers about this while I talk to Duke. Right. I've got an idea of something about the pop. Sheriff Al Rogers of Jasper County loses no time getting into action when told of the suspicious activity of Glenn Harmon and his mouth. Man, we've got plenty to do and very little time to do it in. Glenn Harmon's a tough customer. You all know that. Yeah, we've heard about him. Mark. Now, I want Captain Netflix over at Joplin to get his men out on road patrol. I'll get on the phone, Sheriff. All right. I also want every available man in this department to get out and cover the roads near the golf course. Pick up any cars that look suspicious. If you see Harmon, bring him in. I'm going over to the Van Hoos place and see that the old man gets home safely. You think this mob might be after him? Well, he's had several kidnap threats lately. Won't pay any attention to him. I guess it's my guess that Harmon might be behind them. One thing that's sure, if I get a report of anything ever happening in this county tonight, I'll know who did it. Fast-moving, fast-thinking Sheriff Al Rogers puts the wheels of the law into instant action. All through the night, sheriff cars prowl along deserted roads. Captain Essex, road patrolman, watch every out-of-town highway on the alert for the two cars described by Deputy Hatcher. And Rogers himself drives to the Van Hoos estate. Sees the aged capitalist park his car in the driveway, enter the house. Apparently, Harmon and his mob are not after Van Hoos as the sheriff notices nothing to confirm his suspicions. And after watching the house for some time, Sheriff Rogers leaves, convinced that Van Hoos is safe. Sunday comes and goes, and no sign of harm. The excitement of Saturday night dies down. Tired deputies relax their vigils, settle once more into the more peaceful job of routine work. Then, Monday morning... Office. Sheriff's office. Rogers speaking. Sheriff, you better come out to the Van Hoos place. Something's happened here. What? Mr. Van Hoos has been murdered. Mur- Who is this speaking? His partner. I'm at the house now. All right. Stay right there. I'll be out as fast as I can. to do some shooting himself. His gun in his hand has one empty chamber. You think he shot himself, Charles? He didn't have any reason to. Business was fine. No, he didn't do this himself. Someone got nervous and let him have it. That's obvious enough. Say, maybe it was the same bunch that plugged him and took his ring a few years ago. Remember? They found it in St. Louis and got it back for him. Well, that's a good enough theory. Only the ring is still on his fingers, see? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I hadn't noticed. Uh, Frank... Come here a minute. Yes, sir. Oh, Frank, I'm going back to the office, and I want you to stay around here and follow through on the investigation. Uh, what do you want me to uh, do? Listen, Frank, I haven't got time to explain now, but I've got a pretty good idea who did this. Uh, and the sooner I get started looking for him, the better my chances are. Okay, Sheriff, sure, I'll get all I can here. And check with me at the office when you're through. So long. After his hasty departure from the murder scene, Sheriff Rogers notifies the police of all surrounding cities and counties to be on the lookout for Glenn Harmon and his companions. Then he himself begins a minute search of Jasper County. The same day, he begins to get results. 
Just a minute, you. Huh? Huh. Hello, Sheriff. What's on your mind? You, among other things. Where's your brother? My brother? Yes, Glenn. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen him for months. Oh, uh, that's funny. Maybe your eyes aren't so good. Uh, what do you mean? You were with him Saturday night. Come on, Les, I'm taking you in. Hey, now, wait a minute. What's the charge? Until you tell me where Glenn is, the charge is murder. Come on. <laughs> With a murder charge hanging over him, Les Harmon decides to talk. Claims that he's innocent, but that Glenn might be at his brother-in-law's house. And there the sheriff finds not Glenn Harmon, but Charlie Knapper, known ex-convict. Surprised by Rogers, before he can draw a gun, Knapper is taken in and questioned. Now, listen, Sheriff, I know how it is. Just because I've got a record in Illinois, you think that everything that happens is my fault. Well, you're all wrong this time. Would you be willing to face the man who runs that little tourist camp? What? What, what tourist camp? The one you and Harmon and the boys were at last Saturday night. What's that got to do with a van house trap? Then you were there. Maybe. Where's Glenn Harmon, Napper? I don't know. Who else was with you at the camp? Jerry Wolf, the only one I knew. Jerry Wolf? Do you mean Byron Wolf? Maybe. I call him Jerry. All right, Napper. You won't tell me where Glenn is. So you and Les are going to take the rap. And this time it's murder. First degree murder. That's what you say, sir. For me, I say nuts. And although Sheriff Rogers realizes that his case against Snapper won't stand up, he holds him as a material witness, then proceeds to hunt Glenn Harmon. And a fortunate fact turns up when a check on Jerry Wolf's past brings to light the fact that he lives in Colorado. At once, Rogers travels there, makes inquiries. Inquiries that bring sudden results. Now, listen, Sheriff. I can't understand this, but it's worth something to me. <laughs> you, you know how it is. Sure, I know. You want money, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's worth it to know where Glenn Harmon is. <laughs> Thanks, Sheriff. Uh, how did you know I was looking for Harmon? Now, now, Sheriff. Ain't that kind of a Question? All right, come on, spill it, and I'll see that you get what you want. No, uh, no, uh, uh, nah, nah, you think, sir. Well, how much? Uh, Fifty bucks. Legal robbery, eh? All right, here's your money. Now, how about it? Well, we well, can find Harmon in Los Angeles. He's getting mail at 2841 West 8th Street, and that's all I know. <laughs> your assistance in locating one Glenn Harmon, described as follows. Five foot ten, 150 pounds, age 30 years, dark hair, shallow complexion, wanted for murder by Missouri sheriffs. Might be under alias of Dick Hunt. Companion known as Jerry Wolf, alias Byron Wolf, described as follows. 19 years, 150 pounds, six feet, dark hair. Joe Taylor's office. Boys, I just talked to Sheriff Rogers in Colorado. He tells me this Harmon lad is tough. Shoots first and talks after. Yeah. Now, you've all got the description of both Harmon and Wolf. Get out and make every dive in town and bring them into me if you can. Oh, uh, one thing more, boys. Don't take any unnecessary chances. You know what I mean by that. Uh-huh. Angeles police are called into the case. Lose no time cooperating with Sheriff Rogers. But despite a thorough search of the city, detectives find no trace of either suspect. And the weeks go by. Then, March 27th, 
Into the shop of M. Sunshine, Los Angeles Taylor, walks a young man. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. What can I do for you? Put up your hands. Put up your hands. Uh, right, what? You heard me. Put up your hands. And I don't know. I'll, I'll shoot up, you know. Hey, the police! Up with it! Hey, the police! Help! Screaming, up with his long sunshine, wards off the crashing shop with a hardwood chair. Manages to escape being hit. And the young man, panic stricken, abandons his hold up ideas and rushes to the street. To run directly into the arms of a policeman. Oh, all oh, right, sir. Let me go. 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 Sit in that chair with your back to the door. 
And you're going to sit there nice and quiet like and wait. Listen, you want me if he thinks I can do it. I can't just sit here waiting for him to walk in and let me have it. Don't worry about that, Jerry. We'll be here to take care of him first. Now, here. Here's a magazine for you to be reading. Max, suppose you take one side here. I'll take the other. That way we can see the door and also keep an eye on Jerry here, just in case. Yeah. There, now. Now there's nothing to do but wait. Relax, Jerry. Take it easy and read your magazine. Listen, I can't stand just waiting like this. Ah, ah, Jerry, take it easy. Just remember what I said. Relax. Still, how 
Lieutenant Frommel evaded Harmon's bullets aimed directly at him. But tough is it to say that he did. And as a result, the vicious killer was sent back to Missouri along with young Wolf. But while Wolf was alive, Harmon, the leader, traveled in a coffin. His murderous career ended by police bullets. Thank you, Chief Davis. Wherever Rio Grande cracked gasoline is sold, it has been specified for police car performance. In Northern California, Oakland, metropolis of the East Bay District. In Southern California, Los Angeles, largest city in the West, fifth largest city in the nation. Now in its fourth year, on Rio Grande cracked gasoline. In southern Nevada, Las Vegas, gateway to the Boulder Dam. In Arizona, Phoenix, capital and the state's largest city. Also Maricopa County, where a third of the state's population lives. And Coconino County, second largest county in the United States. Then two in Berkeley, Fresno, Santa Barbara, San Diego, Pasadena, Monterey Park, Linwood, Glendora, Orange County, San Diego County and many, many other cities and counties. Law enforcement officers know what it means to sit behind the throttle with police car performance. And now this week, the thriving industrial city of Southgate joins the Rio Grande Group. Rio Grande Cracked will give you police car performance in your car. See your Rio Grande dealer tomorrow. Ask him also about Sinclair motor oil. There is a correct grade for your car, and you're losing money unless you're using this correct grade. Consult your independent Rio Grande dealer about this tomorrow. Let him give you a free copy of Calling All Cars News, that bright, illustrated tabloid, brim full of police stories, movie and radio news, featured articles and pictures. You'll find it good reading, and it's free. See your Rio Grande dealer tomorrow. Cancellation broadcast 177 regarding men wanted by Missouri officials. These men are now in custody. That's all. Rose and Cliff. <laughs>